How's it going guys? A big reason I love Paper Mario is because of the unique character designs. I mean, look at the- Oh my god, they're all toads! Hey guys, it's Dingani, and what makes a good Paper Mario character design? The new Paper Mario game got announced, that's cool, but at the same time, I think the entire internet is skeptical to some degree. And that's because we haven't seen enough combat, we don't know if the partners are actually- It still partners, takes down the colors questions. But also, a big thing I noticed, the character designs are kind of generic. If you're wondering what I mean by that, it's not that they look bad. But a core part of what made Paper Mario feel so cool was that it didn't feel like Mario. I mean, obviously it was Mario, but when I think of Paper Mario characters, it's not characters like a basic Toad or a basic Shy Guy. It's characters like these. Goombella, Vivian, Professor Frankly, this guy, I forget his name. Even characters like Count Black have a more interesting design. By the way, I realized that Super Paper Mario actually has a really good story, and uh, when I made a video back uh, then, when I uh, did a video on all the Paper Mario games, um, I realized I just was kind of harsh on Super Paper Mario. I never played it. I only played Thousand Year Door, so... Uh... But it's not like the designs magically got boring or generic. It's that Paper Mario went from an RPG to a Mario game with a gimmick. And that sucks! If you know anything about me, you know I love getting immersed into exciting and interesting new worlds that have depth with interesting characters and a great story. And that's what the original Paper Mario games were. They were an RPG, a role-playing game. It wasn't just Mario. All of these characters were something entirely new. It was just so cool. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door took an established property being Mario and turned it into something entirely new. Everything we knew about other Mario games did not apply. Goombas weren't necessarily enemies, they could also be great partners. It's like the Paper Mario series slowly started transitioning back to just Mario, and it's lame. And don't get me wrong, the standard Mario enemy designs that we know are not bad, they are just not Paper Mario, and it's not what makes the series unique. And with Paper Mario the Origami King, we haven't seen any new character designs. I mean, aside from the origami people, but that's, that's the gimmick. And that's what worries me. It's not the RPG that we used to know. And I don't want this to be taken as hate or anything with the new Paper Mario game. I'm still hopeful that it's at least going to be a step closer to the originals. We see a core difference between a place like this and a place like this. It's not just the designs, it's the overall world. I'm not gonna get into gameplay or anything like that because most people know that the new combat just sucks. Basically, the depth in combat in each game is equal to the amount of depth in world building, character design, and overall thought in each game. When the new characters were introduced in the Thousand Year Door, they were exactly that, new characters. Entirely new, we didn't know anything about them previously, and they each had their own unique personalities that we haven't seen in previous Mario games. But with the new Paper Mario games, we kind of already know everything. It feels oddly familiar. It didn't have the depth that we knew from the ones previously. And that's why the character designs feel so much more bland. It's because the world is bland. The new Paper Mario games are kind of bland. But, like I said, not hating on the new uh, Origami King game is still, I think there's a lot of cool things that we have not seen yet. I have hope for it. I really want it to be good. But like most people, I'm not going to get overly excited for it because there's just so much we haven't seen. I'm just concerned because it feels nervously similar to Color Splash. But we can only wait to see. One thing that I have noticed from the trailers is that the world feels a lot more open. And I think that's what made the Thousand Year Door so unique too. Not only was it a very thoughtful world that had a lot of care put into it, but it did feel open in a way. Obviously, it was an open world, but there was enough depth in each area where it felt like there was a lot to explore with interesting characters, interesting world building, interesting designs, everything like that put together made it so cool. Anyway, like I said, Mario character designs are not bad, but they are not what make Paper Mario, Paper Mario. So how would I define a good Paper Mario character design? Firstly, it still has to have the Nintendo charm, feeling familiar but new. This has been consistent with the series, even if lacking in the newer ones. Except Darkly, this child haunts me. But the Nintendo charm of good designs is where it's stylistically pleasing, fits in the Mario world, yet still goofy and weird. And they get pretty damn weird! All of the characters in Thousand Year Door feel like they belong there because the world is equally weird and interesting. Next is character design variety. In order for a character design to stand out, they can't all be the same. Even with more common quote-unquote Mario races, they actually had character design variety in the older games. It actually makes the world feel alive and not so, whoa, a toad, whoa, a toad, whoa. 
Whoa, a toad. Whoa. Apparently, they actually have character variety in the concept stages of Sticker Star, so why did they remove it? At least the combat makes up for it. Psych, the combat sucks too. And of course, having a reason behind a character design. It makes designing a character so much easier and makes them way more believable when there's actually a reason they look like them. This toad has an apron because she's a cook. She's also really mean. Goombella has archaeology gear because she's an archaeologist. Characters in Rogueport look scruffy because they live in Rogueport, aka the streets. Obviously, the flaws with the new Paper Mario game stem much further than bad character design. It's apparent that the new games are not nearly as deep in world building. But regardless, the old games felt so alive because there was a lot of love put into them. I really don't have much more to say other than that. Uh, just, um... There's a reason people still talk about a game that came out in 2004. The only problem is that people aren't talking about the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, the video game that released in 2004 based on the live action slash-